Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my first tournament report. I went to a tournament last weekend, Games of Westeros, number 9. And I thought I should uh, give you a run-through of the games that I had. Ne never done this before, so we'll see how it goes. We start off with the list that, it, that I took, and it was an Orcs and Goblin list. You can see it here, and I will go through it. <coughs> I had a the main piece, center piece, was a feral orc shaman on Wyvern. He was a wizard master of shamanism, with shady shankins on, on his pair weapons. He had magical heirloom and pan of protection pinchin. So he can fly around and cast a lot of magic, fight decently in combat, three attacks from him. Strength 5, Lethal Strike, and Lightning Reflexes, and 3 attacks from his Wyvern. And he's also fairly well protected, uh, a 5 plus 8 to save as a base, and if the opponent's got a better save than him, he can just take that. Next we have the General, a Cave Goblin King. Uh, he's got a Paired Weapon, Warcry, Ebo, and the Crown of Autocracy. This guy's only purpose is being the general and putting out that uh, bubble of uh, Discipline 9. He basically became known as the uh, the troll sitter, because that was his main, jo main job, keeping the trolls in line. Next we have my mascot, Madat himself, a forest goblin king on hunt Huntsman Spider, with a lance a bow, a shield, basalt infused, heavy armor, lucky charm, and crown of wizard king. So this guy has a 1 plus armor save uh, that he can reroll once. He's got a lance, so strength 6, <coughs> strength six, AP 3 on the charge. And he's got a 1 plus armor save that with 1 reroll and a 3 plus Aegis save against landing attacks. Uh, as I said, he's my mascot, so he's also got the crown of the wizard king. So he can, he's a, a wizard apprentice from a random path. Uh, I've been using this guy since a very long time, um, as I mentioned in some of my vi video, I think, uh, about my hobby background. Um, and he's become my uh, internet identity and every everything. Next we have the K Goblin Chief, the Battle Stunner Bearer. He also has a bow and the crown of the Cavern King, so third crown, um, an 18 inch bubble of um, Alessandro Bear rerolls, very nice. A Goblin Witch Doctor on Wolf Chariot, Wizard Apprentice with wi Witchcraft and Alchemist Alloy, so he's got a 4-up four, four armor save. So I have three wizards in the army and all of them are running around on some mount completely unprotected, basically. Core, we have 20 K goblins with bows, musician, and man of discipline, so they are immune to panic, because uh, <coughs> the BSB and the, and the general will both go in this unit pretty much all the time. 15 feral orcs, um, adventures, paired weapons, full command and man of speed. They fight decently, and they are scoring. 50k goblins with nets and full command. This is an anvil, and the nets make them really good at it, and also has a support charge. Scrap wagon, uh, 32 nashers, 2 wrecking teams, 6 cave trolls, as I said, I have a troll sitter to keep them in line, a splatterer with an orc overseer, a gate launcher, and a giant with a giant club. So, that's my army. Uh, the matchups for the first game were made in advance, so you could check those out and try and plan a little bit. And I was up against um, Vermin Swarm, which is a fairly tough matchup for me. Uh, it wasn't the worst possible army uh, army build. Um, it didn't have a pendulum, but still. Two dreadmills and a vermin demon can cause you some trouble. So we'll move on, on to some pictures of the game.
and I'll talk you through it. So this is deployment. Mm, it's not supposed to do that. It's better. Oh, this is a game from a skirmish match I played earlier. Um, so we have uh, my deployment. <coughs> we went back and forth a, bit, a little bit. It's uh, then the scenario is uh, hold the ground. We got a little penny here in the middle, and the de deployment is uh, frontline clash. So we deployed back and th forth a little bit, and after a while, I dropped everything to go first. Too. So this is after my first turn. Um, my army, we got the Git Launcher, Madat, the Go Goblin King on Spider, the Wrecking Teams, um, my K Goblins, the Wizard on Wyvern, the Giant, K Goblins again with uh, bows and the BSB and, ge and the General. General. This is the guy I painted up just for this tournament. The Nashers, the Trolls, the Splatterer, the uh, Witch Doctor on the Chariot, the Ed Bashers and the Scrap Wagon. His army, uh, we got a Dreadmill, a little uh, dart of giant rats, um, a unit of disciples with a sheaf in them, a very mobile sheaf, I think he was movement 9 or something with um, Fetis Broodmasters and Rangers Boots, and uh, he all had some blade that gave him a lot of attacks at low, low strength. Uh, 60 sails, a vermin demon, uh, foot pads, tell them, ratted arms, more he sails, more disciples, and a warlock. Uh, machinist, it's called, in it, uh, 20 vermin guard with the lightning rod, 10 uh, giant rats again, another dreadmill and a turret on a monstrous rat. Uh, he had a one, one of arm save, a 4 up fortitude and a lot of strength for attacks. I think he had the uh, hero's heart. Yeah, the hero's heart on his paired weapons. So, <coughs> um, as I said, this is a fairly tough matchup for me. He has a lot of shooting that can take out all of my small stuff. The Yasails and the Red Mills. And the Demon, of course, can also cause some trouble with the, his Divination. Again, taking out my small stuff. Um, only the only Madat is really immune to his spe his spells, but otherwise they are all very weak to him. Um, I marched up a little bit. Um, I should maybe have been more aggressive here on the right uh, left flank. On the right, I advanced my uh, Ed Bashers. I knew that they could they could handle at least the Dreadmill, the mo Monsters Rat. Maybe if I get the charge on the front, it could be a grind, uh, but probably not a good situation. Um, but the hill here allowed me to play fairly advanced. He, um, he had put the monster's rat on top of the hill it's, so he could see over it, but not the dreadmill, so only one of them could charge in this turn. Uh, in the center I marched up the Nashers and then I used um, Raven's Wing to move them, move them up further. Uh, my first shooting phase, this is at the beginning of his movement, movement phase, so in my, in my first shooting phase <coughs> the uh, splatterer managed to hit the vermin demon, wounded it, he failed his Aegis save and I caused two health points, two wounds. And this, the git launcher uh, also managed to hit it and did another wound and it lost another health point. So that was a nice start. Another view of the <coughs> adversaries on the flank, on the chariot, and the other flank. So, uh, this is a while later. Um, we've danced ar around a bit on the right flank. Um, I. Uh, 
eventually I charged and got beaten by the monster trap with the adversaries, sadly. In the middle, the Nashers were uh, very aggressive, so he had to counter that somehow. And what he did was he marched up the machinist to uh, uh, use the breath weapon on them. He couldn't charge with the disciples because the, the or he didn't want to, because the the, um, the machinist was in the unit. He didn't want to sacrifice him, so he has placed the disciples in front of me, and I had to charge him in my turn and kill him. He, <coughs> I had higher agility, so he only got the um, the uh, damage from the flails, uh, not didn't get a strike. So it was fairly cheap for me. He also rolled very poorly for the machinist. Um, the machinist also had to flee because I charged him with the, uh, the chariot. So he's back here, running away. Uh, in his turn, he countercharged with both the vermin guard and the rat at arms. Uh, the rat at arms had uh, a banner that let them fight in a lot of ranks, so they had a surprising amount of t attacks and they did a lot, lot of damage. So my Nashers just ex exploded. They did some damage before that, though. Um, over on the other side of the board, he has uh, managed a lot of shooting. Both my wrecking teams are gone and the giant is harmed. Uh, the giant has killed the, um, the footpads though. His uh, chief, chieftain, has um, jumped out of his unit of disciples who are left here and are, is advancing on my uh, war machine. He hid the vermin demon from the git launcher and uh, in my shooting phase um, this is in his turn after the movement, I think. But in my shooting phase, he activated the lightning rod. So uh, I only hit his worm demon on a6. So I choose to fire at the uh, assails here and manage to kill one and wound another, reducing the shooting a little bit. Uh, yeah, I should also say that Madat got druidism as his path in this game which was a fairly nice path, and really good to be able to regain some wounds here and there. Uh, another view, and another view. I'm keeping the uh, wizard behind, behind the building, the, um, the wyvern to, behind the building to keep him safe. Um, <coughs> A little while later, uh, as I said, he beat my uh, Nashers in the center, and uh, he overran with the uh, Bourbon Guard. Um, in this turn, my troll sitter failed at his job. The, the trolls were within range, but they managed to fail a Discipline 9 rerollable check and couldn't charge the Bourbon Guard, which was disastrous for me. So I had to uh, run up with the uh, Balasana bear to redirect the <coughs> uh, the Ratchet Arms to give my uh, trolls some respite. Um, and I placed Manat in front of the Git Launcher to pre prevent the Chief from charging it. Also worthy of note is that uh, my shooting really del delivered in this uh, this phase, in this turn, uh, because you can see there's one big important piece missing up here. Uh, the vermin demon took another rock in the head and uh, got taken away. So that, wa that was a big bonus. So. Um, another view here. And yo, that's the last image of that game. So. Um, it looks all right at this point, but uh, unfortunately for me, he charged the uh, Battlestone Bear here and man managed to stick his uh, 10 inch overrun into my bunker, which was uh, terrible. So he defeated the bunker, removed my, my general, and my uh, the Battlestone Bear was already, already dead. So the trolls. Uh, 
were without uh, leadership support. <coughs> um, and so were my cave goblins. Cave goblins got charged by the disciples who were left here and uh, killed. The trolls still had the discipline at the start of my turn, so they could charge the uh, vermin guard. I managed to defeat them, but didn't uh, catch them when they pursued, or no, I didn't I choose to not pursue um, because the dreadmill and the machinist was staring down at me. Uh, so he later charged the trolls and it got <laughs> became a quite interesting combat. Uh, he only cost two health points to my trolls. I uh, saved a lot, a lot of fortitude saves and since I was only discipline four I basically had to win um, or I would be not done for so I needed to cause three or more health points and I think this this must have been in the second turn of combat because I only had three trolls left so with three to uh, trolls I needed to, ne needed to cause three health points and I had one stomp against the uh, uh, machinist so I could maybe have puked uh, directed all the attacks at the uh, dreadmill hoped for two four, four plus and then one three plus on the uh, machinist but I did some quick maths and decided that it was better to gamble with the, the normal attacks so I uh, direct, direct, directed two attacks at the machinist and seven at the dreadmill and I managed to hit with on four plus with one of them on the dreadmill so that was a poor gamble um, so the trolls were defeated as well uh, over on the on the left flank the adversaries were defeated by the monster's rat and the uh, chief killed my um, both my war machines I think he man managed before the end of the game and the last interesting thing that happened Man managed to cause a few panic tests and such in the uh, in the sails. You can see one of them fleeing up here, and the other also started fleeing. So both of those fled off the table. The vermin guard managed to rally, so I didn't get a point for those. But the last interesting th thing that happened was a showdown between the monster threat and my wyvern. So I charged him. Um, he hit first. Did nothing because I took his awesome saves. I hit back managed one little strike with uh, the shaman so I got one wound from there and I think I managed to poke in another wound with the wyvern and uh, so I had two wounds and the char charge so he broke but I di didn't catch him and in his turn he rallied so me nothing happened but at least at least the uh, the wyvern didn't die but in the end it was a loss for me uh, I got six points, I think. Mm, let me check that. We have X and right here. Ah, no. Yeah, we'll just continue. Um, or no, I can check it here instead. This is really quality entertainment, isn't it? So, uh, four points. All right. Uh, we'll continue into the next game. So this was against Hibern Elves and uh, my list I think you can recognize now <coughs> or you can go back and listen to my introduction again. Uh, his list, he has five Hibern lan Lancers, five Reavers, uh, some Seaguard, a Bolter, um, Queen's Guard with a BSB, another Bolter, a lot of swordmasters, 
more reavers, uh, flame wardens, and a uh, order of the fiery heart adept on a young dragon. It's a very big young dragon, but it's it is a young dragon. So I vanguarded up uh, here. We had uh, deployment was dawn assault and uh, king of the hill. Um, I had chosen to protect this forest. He chose to protect this hill. So uh, eager as I was, I marched up the goblins with their vanguard, uh, which they got they got from the BSB uh, to stand on the hill and. Uh, just planning to stand there for the entire game. How hard can it be? Um, yeah, so that was Vanguard. Uh, go in the right direction from another angle, in a much better picture. And this is a little while later. Uh, my Vibern uh, entered some sort of cat and mouse game with the Reavers, or no, the Lancers. Um, it was a very fav favorable matchup for me, um, as long as I got Scarification off, he could only wound me on uh, 5 plus, and I could always take his uh, 2 up armor save and he fired well protected. Um, it was maybe a mistake to keep, to, ki to continue with this cat and mouse game because I meant I didn't have the magic support in the center that I maybe should have uh, had, could have needed that. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's see, next picture, uh, another close up here, you can see Madat, he got, got Occultism in this game and Pentagram of Pain, which is a decent spell, um, but I still don't really have enough ranged damage, uh, magic damage to really put a threat um, in it. So yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, as you can see, he has his uh, reavers here. Uh, I charged them with the uh, cake goblins, and then I I also charged the giant here into the swordmasters. He had taken three wounds; had four left. And he needed double sixes to uh, complete the charge. I figured he's uh, gonna die from shooting anyway. If I go in, go in here, get a bit lucky, I can kill a lot of uh, swordmasters. Um, so the goblins charged the reavers, and the giant charged the swordmasters. And uh, the goblins overran into the swordmasters, so I got a net on him. So he wounded me on five plus with on the giant and sadly he he did manage to roll uh, for five five plus uh, he had what uh, 16 attacks I think uh, yeah four by four hit on two plus wound on five plus yeah it she probably should have killed the giant with some luck I would have gotten through with <coughs> did the matter out afterwards and it it wouldn't really have mattered, but it would have been awesome So that was a shame um, So the soul master continued into the fight with the K goblins um, And his dragon is starting to surround me and the flame wardens are coming up here uh, Yeah, the uh, Lancers are dead at least <laughs> The uh, he, he shot all of my wrecking teams away, no problem. My Ed Bashers charged the Seaguard. Uh, um, it was a terrible matchup for them, so they lost. In the same turn, I also decided that I would not charge the uh, Nashers into the Swordmasters, they would just die, so I sh instead charged them into the Queen, uh, Queen's Guard, which felt like a really great matchup. And they, a few of them died because they strike first, um, but I ate up most of the unit, only five remained, and the BSB had taken one, one wound as well. And he managed to stick the Discipline 4 uh, break test. So the, um, the Seaguard could charge me in the flank 
and annihilate me. So I got, I think I got half points for the 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 Queen's Guard. Maybe I managed to, managed to shoot them away late game, but I don't think so. The Cave Goblins lasted a few turns against the <coughs> Sword Masters. Uh, the Trolls and Madat charged into the Flame Wardens, and in the first combat round, it was a pillow fight. He uh, managed pretty much all his Aegis save, and I set all of my 42 save saves. In the second turn, I again uh, <coughs> cleared all the 42 saves. He didn't do as well with the uh, the Aegis saves, so I uh, managed to break his stat fast and actually kill that unit. Which was nice, but the soul masters killed the, the um, K goblins, and my uh, bunker ran off the table. But I had abandoned it already with the <coughs> general and the BSB. He managed to kill the general before the end, you know, end of the game. So it was another loss for me. Uh, but uh, the objective was uh, a tie. So I got uh, say seven points, I think. Let's see. Yes, that's correct. So next next game against <coughs> the Vampire Covenant. Um, his army, wolves, a dark coach, more wolves, bats. Um, Vampire Spawn, eight of them. Skeleton with a Necromancer. More Great Pats, Ghouls, and <laughs> a, a Death Star. <coughs> this is ten Barrow Knights with five courtiers, or maybe four courtiers, and a Lord. Um, they had something like 30 strength, seven attacks on the charge. So, yeah. <coughs> that ain't dangerous. Uh, the scenario was a uh, secure target. You got, got a penny up here and one behind this building. And deployment was um, in circle. He got the big, big center and I got the big flanks. I vanguarded the goblins up. To try and put pressure. Um, so yeah. Uh, I also took the first turn and moved up fairly aggressively, um, as you can see. The Vibern, uh, as it is now, has not a lot, lot not a lot of threats on this side. The Dark Coach. <coughs> Maybe if he gets the charge, but I can take his saves, so I'm fairly well protected. And if I have scarification on, it's no problem, I think. Um, I also managed to cast a <coughs> Totemic Summon. So one little guy back here, which is nice. Um, yeah. In his turn... Uh, yeah, this is a better picture. He has um, moved the wolves to uh, uh, one working team each. This one suffered two casualties, this one suff <coughs> suffered seven. So that was a bit annoying. Uh, he also <coughs> moved the necromancer into the ghoul unit and turned the vampire spawn around to kill the uh, Totemic Summon. Uh, he made a small mistake here though, the uh, um, Scrap Wagon can still charge the wolves, so I did that and they died. Um, yeah, uh, This is after his next turn. Yeah. Has to be. Uh, I moved up again with the uh, the wyvern. Um, put up another uh, totemic summon, and he has charged his um, 
Death Star into my trolls. He <coughs> stuck a charge needing 10 or 11 on the dice, I think. Um, but he had no reason not to take it because um, he had nothing to lose, basically. Uh, they they wouldn't end up in a bad position from a fade charge, so <coughs> it was stupid of me to give him that chance, really. Uh, he shaft up the Nashers. And uh, yeah, that's about it. The, these have charged the Titanic Summon. Yeah, and as you can see here, the wolves are gone. Um, <coughs> and the adversaries have placed themselves on top of that objective. Um, yeah. Um, this is. Uh, quite a while later, uh, I can go through a little bit what happened in my turn. So um, the wolf chariot and the goblins charge the, the ghouls. I rolled poorly. He rolled awesomely, one by seven or something. The, so the chariot set off. Uh, the goblins uh, stayed on. Instead of us, I think I failed to, to cast my net that turn. Uh, which of course um, made, made it worse, but he's poisoned, so it doesn't matter that much. Uh, Nashers killed the the bats. Oh, and the giant here, he's fleeing, um, or was was fleeing, maybe. Uh, the sh the um, dark coat charged him, I, and I didn't didn't want to risk it, so he could he retreated a little bit. Um, <coughs> the why why charged into the rear of the coach. It looked like a favor favorable combat. His vampire struck first <coughs> and didn't do anything because I took his 4 plus ages. I struck back and I didn't do in anything because he had 4 plus ages and uh, neither of, uh, of us did anything. I had a charge and a rear. So I won by 3. He had 2 uh, HP left. Had I, had I done a wound or had I done one more wound than he, he did, um, he would have been destroyed. <coughs> and I could have overrun, overran out of the arc of the vampire spawn, but I didn't. They charged me and killed him. Uh, so that was a shame. Uh, so this is after that, and I've also charged the, the uh, Nashers into the ghoul fight. Um, turning it a bit more favorable for me. Uh, the bunker has been destroyed by the skeleton, by the, um, uh, the totemic summons. His necromancer was still in this unit, uh, so he got <coughs> eaten by Nashers. Uh, I reformed wide to keep the uh, map spawn in my front. And the dark coach charged the giant. Let's see, yeah, so pretty much everything <laughs> is dead by now. Um, let's go back. Uh, the Vampire Spawn shot in, kill a lot of Nashers, Nashers kill a lot of retur in return, uh, but uh, both my units were destroyed. Uh, the Giant won this combat. Um, he's fairly angry, and he survived with I think two wounds, maybe as one, so he was really angry. Um, and killed the, sh the coach. I charged the giant and the uh, totemic summon into what was left of his vampire spawn, and I got it down to maybe one or two months left, and then I managed to shoot those down. He charged, he couldn't charge here with the unit because the uh, terrain was in the way. But he charged one, one of the characters out and uh, helped finish this combat. Um, that character later charged into <coughs> the rear of this unit, mad at. Um, no, I think he overran into the unit. So mad at counter charged immediately and killed him. Um, but later the unit ran off the table. I think it fled a charge from the ghouls or something. Um, so it was another loss for me. Um, let's see here. 
six points. Not good. <clears throat> but we'll move on to the next game, game four. So this is the second day. Um, and I had a pretty favorable matchup, Dwarven Holds, with not a lot of shooting. So um, this is what he's got. He's got uh, a unit of 10 Greybeards, hand weapon shields, and throwing weapons. A Grudge Master, an Anvil, Anvil of Doom, a big unit of uh, Greybeards, hand weapon shields, with a Runic Smith. <coughs> And he had a, ba had a banner that made it uh, harder for me to charge him. And also had a, had the battle stun bear in this unit. A unit of King's Guard with a king who uh, um, was quite good at killing big things. Uh, a unit of two uh, helicopters, ten more greybeards with throne weapons, an organ gun. Uh, and 15 Seekers. So deployment was uh, refused flank, scenario was um, captured flags, so I had to kill his scoring units and he had to kill my, mine. <coughs> oh, he also had uh, some um, uh, miners, so I kept the uh, scrap wagon here in the back to deter the them also kept the uh, wizard chariot in the back. Uh, my other wizard stay, wizard stayed behind a bit, uh, not wanting to risk the organ gun. But it wasn't that big a problem. In the, my first turn, I caused swar swarm of insects on it, <coughs> caused caused uh, two health points, and it suffered minus one to hit. Uh, in his turn. <coughs> he misfired and uh, took another wound, and in my second turn I killed it with another swarm of insects. Um, let's see here, yeah. So this is what it looks, looks like in the first turn. Um, <coughs> He didn't manage to kill the Wrecking Team, which is always bad. Um, he didn't have, have that much shooting, so it's not that surprising. So in my turn he stood like this, and my Wrecking Team jumped from down here, rolled 14, and got through all three units. This is the casualties. This unit I caused 11 hits, not a single one, so they were gone. And I caused 12 hits to this unit, and 9 were, nine were killed, and I think maybe 4 hits <coughs> to the Seekers, not a lot of damage there. But it was still a very successful jump through. Uh, in his turn he charged the Seekers into the Nashers, and both of... Uh, yeah, the, the Grudge Passer charged the flank, and this unit failed to charge on the Goblins. I think he needed a 7 or something. Not that high. Um, my Ad Bashers charged the um, Greybeards here on the flank, killed them, or won the combat, didn't chase them down, and had to redo it to show them. Um, <coughs> so that went fairly well. Uh, his shooting is now gone, so my wizards are starting to move up to try and <coughs> be more active in the game. Um, yeah, I was a little bit unlucky in this combat. Uh, on average, I th should about kill him, uh, but I didn't. There were three dwarves left, <coughs> so I couldn't charge with them in my turn. But yeah, not a big deal in the end, as it turned out. Instead, I charged with uh, both the Trolls and the Giant into the King's Guard. He had moved up a little bit by then. And it was a pretty scary move, uh, because <coughs> because of the King who had uh, multiple wounds, D3 against everything. Um, 
but I flew up with the uh, wizards and uh, forced through some spells, so I got um, bring the pain off on his unit. So in combat <coughs> he struck first with his four attacks, hitting on two plus, two misses, wounding on two plus, another fail. So only one got, tr got through, I failed the AD save and he cost three health points. Um, which we did the math was about average, he should do about four health points. So <coughs> one troll removed before fighting so not that bad actually um, but my trolls and the giant really uh, got angry the giant was one first so um, and the other trolls right after he got the strike with about seven dudes I think and then I stomped every last one of them out of his existence <coughs> so he lost his stubborn and uh, ran away both pursued and I got the king uh, so that that was nice. Uh, you can see that here. Uh, now he has charged the uh, uh, greybeards into my tea goblins. <coughs> um, he cast a lot of spells on them, and I uh, he's got a full back rank here. You can see, and he managed to kill out of my unit. So we had the exact number, same number of, of ranks. Um, had he killed one less, um, I would have had more ranks than him. But I got to strike back, um, but it didn't cause a single wound to him, so he broke my steadfast and they, and they ran. Um, yeah, you can see a close up of the aftermath of the King's Guard. Um, but it uh, didn't matter that much. Uh, let's see here. The Grudge Buster ended up somewhere here and I managed to charge it with the uh, Scrap Wagon. Uh, the gr Grudge Buster had lost some wounds to shooting uh, from earlier. Um, so the Scrap Wagon charged it and I cast Awaken the Beast on it so it had, it had uh, strength 5 impact hits. Uh, however, I forgot that it also get, got um, armor, uh, armor penetration 4, thanks to the spell. So <coughs> I thought it only had 3, and so he got a 6 up armor save and just managed to survive one wound, killed the uh, scrap wagon, and uh, then charged. He charged the um, chariot here, uh, and I fled. So he redirected into the lobber uh, or the splatterer, and I think he failed that charge, but later got it and killed it. And the wizard never rallied, so he got those point as, points as well. <coughs> uh, or half, I think. Um, it ended before he, he got off the table. So um, here. Uh, he got the miners on the table and killed the uh, heat launcher. The giant charged the uh, anvil and killed it in turn. The wrecking team is still alive and kicking. He moved a lot a lo around a lot, uh, where he rolled high all the time, but uh, he didn't do any mo anything more. And in the center of the board, I uh, managed to surround him with pretty much everything I got <coughs> and charged him with the gnashers and the Wyvern, Wyvern in the, in the rear, and again the dice coming down to me just killing enough to break his steadfast and uh, destroying that unit. So it was a big victory for me, um, 19 points. Um, yeah. The last game, another Vampire Covenant, a really awesome army. Uh, he has a Shrieking Horror, a Dark Coach, another Shrieking Horror, three Vampire Knights, a Zombie Bunker with two Necromancers, both with a Blinding Stroll, a big unit of Skeletons with a Court of the Damned, <coughs> and a Vampire uh, Count on top, Lamia. Um, she's got Witchcraft and Mesmerizing Gaze, so she could cast uh, Whispers of the Whale twice. 
um, bats, ghouls, and more bats. Um, so this was a really scary matchup. The shri Shrieking Horrors are, <coughs> are such a good uh, zoning tool. And I was really pondering to... Um, he, he dropped everything to go first. Uh, the scenario was... Um, let's see here. What was the scenario? The deployment was counter thrust and the scenario was breakthrough. That's it. So I was really, really considering dropping everything pretty much on uh, on the right right flank uh, to try and keep his ring hor horse out of the game for as long as possible. Um, but I decided against it in the end. So this is how I dropped. Um, he had the first turn, as I said. Um, and didn't really do that much, which is always nice if you can force your opponent to <coughs> pretty much waste that. He moved. Let's see if I got a picture of it. Yeah, so this is after my first turn. Um, or a bit into his second. Um, he moved a little bit to the right to try and get away from my uh, big pile of miniatures here. Um, he placed one of the uh, bats <coughs> on um, the wrecking team here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the end of that turn. So he flew over the. Uh, this must be his second turn. Yeah, in his, in his first turn, he flew uh, the shrink horn from there to there. I mo moved up with the wrecking teams, and he flew back with the. Uh, uh, Shring Horror here and uh, scream that one to death, risking a I think 10 on the dice charge, maybe 11 or something like that. He also calls the wi a Witchcraft Evil Eye on them, so make it a little, little bit harder. Um, and then there's also Warcry to take in, uh, into account, so <coughs> can't really remember. I didn't charge them. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, each turn, he, uh, the first uh, first two turn, he used binding stall on my totem summon, so I couldn't get that one through. Um, he summoned a unit of zombies in front of me, and he uh, moved up the bats here to screen me, uh, to shaft me, and I failed the frenzy test and had to charge. Um, yeah, he got a lot of <coughs> uh, twisted e twisted effigies off my catapults. I couldn't do much with that. Um, the gate launcher shot a little, little bit at this uh, shrieking horror or at knights, uh, causing some wounds here and there. <coughs> but it doesn't really matter against vampire covenant. Um, so yeah. Uh, this was a <laughs> scary turn for me. So I moved the giant up to behind the building here. The Shrieking Horror cannot move out of his arc uh, to this side. He can fly up, <coughs> uh, fly up and scream at me, but he only causes six hits. So he can at most cause six wounds, and that would re leave me at one health point. And a very angry giant to counter shot with. Uh, the uh, Adbashers overran and landed perfectly in front of uh, this unit, still keeping them in the front. And I use, used the uh, Raven's Wing to move up the, um, the Nashers up here to be able to counter charge the ghouls without being threatened by the skeletons. The Wyvern had to move into the middle to reach, be able to reach with spells and such. So in his turn, he charges the Shrieking Horror <coughs> and the Ghouls into the Adbashers. And he moves uh, up the Skeletons this way um, and moves around a little bit. Again, Twisted Effigy here and the Evil Eye on them. Uh, I also placed my uh, evil eye on the 
on the Nashers to be able to counter charge effectively. Uh, so yeah, this is a while later. I forgot to take pictures. <coughs> he overran with the ghouls, landing somewhere here. I charged the giant into the front of the Shrieking Horror. And the chariot and the Nashers into the ghouls. And I managed to get through um, Bring the Pain on them. On the ghouls. <coughs> so uh, the Nashers and the chariot obliterated them. The chariot overran into the combat with the uh, Shrieking Horror and helped uh, bring it down to a single wound left. And it caused a single wound back to the chariot, leaving it on two remaining, I think. Uh, and I then reformed, uh, getting us here. So the Nashers are facing down the skeletons, and they are just standing here because they couldn't reform. Uh, let's see here. So he charges the Nashers with his big unit of skeletons. Moves up the uh, Vampire Knights a bit, and uh, I had managed to get up a Titanic Summon in the back. Uh, let's see, I don't think I can see it in any, any picture, uh, but he moved the Shrieking Hard. <coughs> I killed it. Um, so I charged the, the trolls into the flank of the Vampire Knights. Uh, and I overran, landing so that the Dark Coach couldn't see me, but the um, skeletons could. They had killed the Nashers and reformed to face this way. I think that was a mistake of him. He should have just moved into my deployment zone down here, but it was a bit risky because I could have Surround, surrounded him and maybe taken him out. Instead, he faced this way, and in, in the turn that the trolls charged the, the uh, uh, vampire knights here, <coughs> the spl splatter at, la at last got the fire and hit uh, this, this unit on its head. And I managed to bring the vampire down to a single wound remaining. So I decided to overrun. The skeletons I had in uh, order to overrun the trolls, I had planned to let uh, them have a 10 inch, 10 on dice uh, charge to make it a gamble. But seeing as he, she only had a single wound, single health point remaining, I thought he could charge and I could maybe puke, him, puke her to death. Um, he did charge, but he. <clears throat> got a race through uh, an arise, so uh, she got two health points back. Tr the trolls um, cost one in the combat, and then they were broken. But he didn't pursue because then the then he could have counter countercharged the goblins in the in the flank and the chariot and other things. So. <clears throat> um, so I basically got a single turn here in the end to try and to try and kill kill the uh, the vampire. So the rock um, splatter fired again, hit. He failed his four, four up edges. He had two health points left, and he cost one on the D three. Shame, but the day was saved because. This little guy has two bows as well. He fired. I directed one hit at the vampire. Only six to wound. He failed Aegis and the vampire was dead. Sadly the uh, Shrieking Horror didn't, didn't crumble. But um, still it was a win for me. Uh, let's see. 13 points. Yeah. So that's the the end of the tournament uh, and the end of my pictures so yes some closing thoughts <coughs> I finished in uh, at 49 points which is a shame my goal is always 50 
um, but I was close, so yeah. And I did a, lo a lot better on the second day than the first, uh, which was nice and on a high note. Uh, but the most important thing is that I had um, <laughs> a lot of fun, um, five really great games and uh, five really great opponents that I haven't, I don't think I played played against any of them before, but maybe sometime long ago, I don't know. Uh, but there were, uh, some of them were fairly new to the hobby, so yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, always great tournaments in in uh, Westeros, so no surprise there. <coughs> so yeah, that will be the end of this show. My voice is giving up on me. Thanks for listening. <laughs>